All right, now it's time to talk about cognitive development, which is one of my favorite topic areas in psychology. Hopefully it'll be yours. And to do this, we need to consider stage theorists. That's my dog. A stage theorist is someone who believes that development occurs in a series of stages. Those stages occur in a predictable sequence. You do not skip stages in development and behavior at one stage is qualitatively different from behavior in another stage. And we're going to talk about a very important, very famous cognitive psychologist named Jean Piaget. Jean Piaget was a stage theorist. He contributed enormously to our understanding of cognitive development in children. But not every psychologist is a stage theorist. We will also be talking about developmental psychologists who were stage theorists in the context of social development and moral development. And Jean Piaget is the name to know when you think about cognitive development occurring in a series of stages. Once again, if you are a stage theorist, you believe that development occurs in a series of predictable stages. You do not skip stages in development. And behavior at one stage is qualitatively, not just quantitatively, different from behavior at another stage. So Piaget didn't believe that children just know less or have fewer cognitive abilities than adults. He believed that children think differently in a qualitative fashion from adults and that children at one stage of cognitive development think in a qualitatively different fashion from children in another stage of cognitive development. Now I'm going to ask that you know Piaget's stages of cognitive development. They're shown on the screen, but I don't know that you need to copy them down right now because we're going to go through them one by one in a moment. First, we need to consider some Piagetian terms. The first of which is cognitive schema. According to Piaget, cognitive schema consists of rules about how the world works and how to work upon the world. Cognitive development involves the acquisition of new cognitive schema. There are two other vocabulary terms on the screen, assimilation and accommodation. And I'll give you the definitions first, and then I'll give you illustrations so you can make sense of this information. Assimilation is a Piagetian term that involves the idea that a child is exposed to new information but that new information fits old rules about how the world works or old cognitive schema. So those rules about the world do not change. In contrast, for accommodation, a child encounters new information that does not fit old rules about how the world works or old cognitive schema. So those old cognitive schema must change. Here's an illustration that might help. Imagine that I'm an aunt and my sister has a brand new baby, her first one, and she is very protective of that baby. And she has a rule for the family that the only toy you're allowed to bring to her home and give to the baby would be stuffed animals. These are safe. She'll check them to make sure that the eyes and the nose and are safe, no button noses, but the child is only exposed to stuffed animals. So I cooperate with my sister and I'm coming to her house and I bring a toy and it's a stuffed animal. I hand it to the baby, the baby takes it, and it's just like every other toy the child has received. It feels furry when you hold it, it is soft and squishy when you put it in your mouth, you feel fur on your lips, nothing new here, no cognitive schema must change, and this is an illustration of assimilation. Now, one day I get permission from my sister and I bring a different kind of toy. This time I bring a plastic rattle, also safe for the child, but something new. I hand it to the child, the child holds it, it feels different. It's not furry, it's hard and smooth rather than soft and squishy. And lo and behold, when you hold it and shake it, it makes a noise. And when you do that, all the adults in the room laugh. So here we have new information, it's a new type of toy, and that new toy does not fit the child's old cognitive schema about how the world works and how to act upon the world. So those cognitive schema must change, and this is an illustration of accommodation. According to Jean Piaget, these are the processes that are involved in cognitive development. Now we can talk about Jean Piaget's stages of cognitive development. The first stage is the sensory motor period, which lasts from birth to about two years of age. 
And according to Piaget, this is the time period when mental representation develops. Look at the word sensory motor. You have incoming sensations and you have output in the form of motor movements. What goes in between sensations and motor movements? Thoughts, cognitions, or mental representations of objects or events. According to Piaget, mental representation is absent at birth and it develops gradually during the first two years of life. The classic test for mental representation is the object permanence test. I actually was able to conduct object permanence testing when I was working at Cornell Medical Center with two-year-old infants, and it's kind of fun. I would sit at this little wooden table that had wells in it, not unlike pool table pockets. And I would wear a lab coat and make sure I had pockets full of toys. And the child would be sitting on the lap of someone facing me on the other side of the table. And I would hold up a toy, like a little metal car, and wait for the child to reach for it so I would know the child was interested in playing with the toy. Then while the child would watch, I would place the toy in one of the wells of the table and cover it with a small piece of cloth. And the object permanence test involves removing that cloth and getting the toy. Because at that point, once object permanence develops, it's no longer out of sight, out of mind. But Piaget suggested that object permanence develops gradually. So once a child is able to perform a visual guided reach for an object, which occurs about five months of age, I can start performing this test with the child. And here what I can do is place the object in the well and have the cloth only partially cover the toy. And when the child has not yet developed any object permanence, the child will not pick up the cloth and reach and grab the toy. But if you wait a few minutes, you can do this and the child will, if the object is partially visible, the child will grab the cloth and pick up the toy. Then you wait a few more months and you completely cover the toy and the child will pick up the cloth and grab the toy. But according to Piaget, the child may not have full object permanence at this point. For instance, even if the child is able to do this, what I might try is hiding the toy in a well, say the one on the far left, cover it up, child reaches out, grabs the cloth, gets the toy. Then I hide it in the same place, the same well of the table, and the child will again reach out, grab the cloth, and pick up the toy. But now while the child is watching, I take the toy and I hide it in a different well of the table. The child is seeing me hiding it over here on the right now, and the child will go to the first location for the toy. However, once the child reaches about two years of age, the child will not be fooled in this fashion anymore, and the child is said to have full object permanence. The second stage of cognitive development, according to Jean Piaget, is the pre-operational period, which lasts from about two years to seven years of life. Now, as will become very clear, Jean Piaget studied many children, including his own, and his interest was primarily in what children could not do. He was fascinated by the errors that children make. And when we talk about the pre-operational child, we're really focusing on what that child is not able to do, according to Jean Piaget. First of all, according to Piaget, the preoperational child is not capable of serialization. This is also called seriation, but it basically means taking objects and putting them in order in terms of length. Bless you, Amy. My dog sneezed. Seriation or serialization might involve picking up sticks of various lengths, placing them in order from shortest to longest. Piaget also conducted tests of serialization in the classroom with children asking a child to line up classmates according to height from shortest to tallest. Although I am not quite comfortable with that type of testing just because some children are sensitive about their heights. Furthermore, according to Piaget, the preoperational child does not show conservation. And there are several types of tests for conservation. One is the conservation of volume test, where you have two identical glasses with identical amounts of fluid in them. While the child is watching, pour the fluid from one of those glasses into a tall, thin glass. While the child would agree that the fluid levels are the same for the first two glasses, after the fluid is poured into the third, tall, thin glass, the child is apt to say that now there's a different amount of fluid in the glass. 
the child watched you pour it and the child knows that you didn't add any fluid or take away any fluid but the child is according to Piaget easily fooled by appearance in another type of conservation test the conservation of mass test you can take balls of clay two balls of clay A and B identical amounts of clay identical sizes of balls the child will agree that they're the same but while the child watches you can roll one of those balls into a thin snake-like shape and the child will say that it's now different even though the child watched you do this and knows that you did not add any clay or take any clay away likewise there's the conservation of number test here you have poker chips and you line them up as shown and ask the child which has more the top row or the bottom row and the child in the pre-operational period according to Piaget will say they're the same now while the child watches take one of those rows and move the poker chips further apart and now ask the child are they the same and the child will suggest that there are now more poker chips in the row that was changed again according to Jean Piaget the pre-operational child is easily fooled by appearance finally according to Jean Piaget the pre-operational child is egocentric and by that he meant that the child cannot see the world from another person's perspective and there is a classic test for egocentrism that Piaget used here you're looking at a table and there's a three-dimensional scene on the top of the table specifically three mountains of different heights the tall mountain has a snowy cap the medium-sized mountain has a cross and then that little front mountain has a little house on top of it the child is asked to stand on one side of the table and to take a look at it and then the child is asked to walk around the table and look at this three-dimensional scene from every possible angle coming back to the first side of the table and then several photographs are shown to the child and the child is asked to pick out the photograph of the three-dimensional scene that looks like what the doll can see from across the table and the pre-operational child according to Piaget is unable to do this because he thought that the child was egocentric and unable to see the world from another person's perspective next is the period of concrete operations from about 7 to 11 years according to Jean Piaget now the child is capable of object permanence the child can serialize the child is no longer egocentric and the child is capable of conservation but according to Piaget the child is still thinking in a qualitatively different fashion from an adult he believed that the child in the period of concrete operations was not fully logical for instance I can ask you if A is greater than B and B is greater than C then is A greater than C and you can tell me the answer because you are capable of logical analysis but if I ask a child during the period of concrete operations this type of question I might say the doll Annie is bigger than the doll Betty and Betty is bigger than the doll Carla does that mean that Annie is bigger than Carla and a child during this stage of cognitive development would not be able to answer the question they'd basically say that they need to have the dolls physically concretely present in order to answer the question so they're not quite logical yet from the Piagetian perspective the final stage of cognitive development according to Jean Piaget is a period of formal operations from about 12 years of age and older now there have been many criticisms of the Piaget and perspective over the years one criticism is that he stopped too early and if you take a developmental psychology course you'll learn that other psychologists have come along and suggested that there are additional stages of cognitive development after this one but I want you to know Jean Piaget's stages of cognitive development and his final stage is the period of formal operation he suggested that now the child is capable of abstract thought deductive reasoning and hypothesis testing here is the classic Piagetian test for this type of logical processing here you have a pendulum sitting on a table basically it's a stand there's a string attached to it with the object tied to the string and that object can swing back and forth as a pendulum in this test you're asked what will make the ball move faster and what you should do is generate several hypotheses I've put four on the screen drop the ball from a greater height change the length of the string push the ball harder change the weight of the object 
and ultimately test each of these hypotheses one by one. If you manipulate two of these possibilities simultaneously and you see a difference in the behavior of the pendulum, then you don't know which of those things actually caused the change. So in hypothesis testing, you test one change at a time and you see the result. If you were to test all these hypotheses, you would find that number two, changing the length of the string, actually has an effect on the speed of the object as it moves back and forth on the pendulum. So once again, Jean Piaget suggested that cognitive development occurs in a series of stages and that these stages are predictable, they occur in sequence, and behavior at one stage is qualitatively different from behavior at another stage. I mentioned earlier that there have been critics of Piaget in theory, and I would suggest that sometimes the measure of a scientist's contributions is based at least in part on how many people come along and try to prove that person wrong. Piaget has had an enormous impact on how we view children's cognitive abilities, He's impacted our educational system, and he has generated a great deal of research, some of which has shown that not every facet of his theory was correct. For instance, it's been suggested that Piaget underestimated the abilities of children, and that his tests were often motor dependent or language dependent. Take the test of object permanence, where a child must reach out, lift a cloth, and grab a toy. We know that the visual guided reach typically does not develop until about five months of age. So maybe motor development is influencing the results of that particular Piaget and test. Other researchers have used something called a surprise test to test for object permanence. To do this, they showed children this little fence made out of cardboard and sticking above the fence is the top of a carrot with a face on it, a smiley face and the child watches as that carrot moves along the fence until it gets to the end of the fence and it's suddenly apparent that there is no bottom half to this carrot. Looking at it, one would assume that the bottom part of the carrot was hidden by the fence, but when it comes out from behind the fence, there is no bottom half to this carrot. And so the researchers conducting this type of test would watch the children's faces in order to see if the child shows surprise. And if they show surprise, at this, then the idea is that the child has object permanence and does know at some level that there is supposed to be a bottom part of that carrot. And they conclude that object permanence develops earlier than suggested by Piaget. The surprise test lets you test much younger children who have not yet developed the visual guided reach. In another example, researchers questioned the Piaget and finding that preoperational children do not show conservation of number. So they changed the test a little bit. They showed children a tray, and on the tray were these little tiny plastic dwarves, and they lined up the dwarves into two rows, and they asked the child which is the winner and which is the loser. And the child would say, oh, they're the same. There is no winner or loser. Then, while the child watches, you move the little toy dwarves in one row further apart and you ask the child which is the winner and which is the loser. And the child will not be fooled by appearance and will say there is no winner or loser, they're the same. And what these researchers suggested was that children are sometimes fooled by language, that more and less are difficult concepts or difficult words for children to understand but they spend their days playing games and so they're much more familiar with words like winner and loser. So again, there are some criticisms of the Piaget in perspective. For instance, that he underestimated the abilities of children and that his tests may have been motor dependent and language dependent. Others have actually criticized his work by saying that he emphasized what children cannot do rather than what they can do. But Everyone agrees, for the most part, that he made enormous contributions to the field of psychology.